Welcome to the HS Body Works Back to Life series, presented by Be Tough. We go out and we look at some of the best hot rods in California, painted right here at HS Body Works. Hey everybody, this is Billy with our Back to Life series from H&S Body Works, man. This is a supreme build I'm about to show you. This is like one of the best ones we've done and uh, we're gonna introduce everybody here. We got Chris over here who had his hands in a lot of this. We've got George who kind of orchestrates a lot of it here at the shop. And we have Scott who is the project manager on this car. Yes, this car has a project manager. And of course this thing was, and he's not here, was painted at H&S Body Works by Dick Shepard and the crew, right? So. This is a special build because, what year is this Corvette? 1967. 1967. George, how long did you have this Corvette in operation? Uh, about two years. Two years. Now, George, you said, I asked if this was the pinnacle of your career, and, and what you said that this was the most intensive, I'll let you explain it. The most intense build we've had because we, we were brought a car that was beautiful to look at, but had no parts or pieces. Um, and parts for these cars are extremely hard to find. What we do is get a list together and give it to Scott. He would locate what he could. What he could not find, he would find somebody someplace in a box full of parts that we dig through re and refurbish those. And, and Chris was able to masterfully fit these pieces into this car. He did a hell of a job on it. Yeah, Scott, how, like, did everything, were you looking for number matching? Like, what are you looking for when you try to find stuff? Well, we try to find original parts as best we can. The The whole genesis of the project was a, uh, the engine of this car is a 69 L88 crate motor uh, over the counter. So it's, while it's not a numbers matching engine, it's not a mismatch either. It doesn't have another car's VIN number stamped upon it. Uh, this engine was offered in, in 1967. It was the first year it was offered. It was basically a factory race edition. And these cars originally weren't uh, offered with any amenities whatsoever. No heater, no radio, no air conditioning, no power steering, nothing. Uh, because they were, they, the factory wanted the racers to buy them and uh, run them on the track. They really didn't want the public running around in one of these. You know, the thing is, so like back then in NASCAR, a lot of the times you had to run production stuff, right? So a lot of the manufacturers were building NASCAR parts and sticking them on cars so they could be at the track and say, no, this is a production part, exactly. right? Yep. And that's exactly what this thing is. And we'll get into it. There's a there's a really interesting, interesting story about the distributor. Tell us about that because that is fascinating. Well, the, the L88 was the very first uh, electronic distributor that uh, General Motors ever produced. And uh, to find a, a decent one that would be rebuildable, you're looking anywhere from 2,500 to five grand. Uh, and of course, in my search for parts for this car, I uh, would enter in my search engine L88 on every website I could possibly find. And then one time on Craigslist, I punched it in and all of a sudden here's an L88 distributor up in Visalia. So I uh, contacted the guy, he only wanted a thousand dollars for it. And I thought, well, that's awful cheap. So, uh, because they can go how high? I mean, like five grand for, for junk basically. Cause it's just, they're non-existent. So, uh, I, I contacted him. He sent me photos of the, of the, the part numbers and everything on it. It was, it worked out. It was legitimate. Uh, I went up to buy it and, uh, asked him what the story was behind it. And he told me that, uh, he was a kid. He worked for a guy's garage and the guy had a race car and he bought an L88 motor over the counter. Uh, but was running a magneto in it so he took that distributor and coil off and uh, that guy still had it from back in the day and had never been run so this thing's running a brand new factory setup probably the only one in the world dude like we're well, not only one but one of them like, i bet there's they're less than 10 if they're if they're it's out there it's very well possible that that's the original distributor that came out of this motor. well you never Is know because that motor yeah yeah wow. there's only 20 of them built in 67. Incredible. Yeah. All right, so let's take a look at this thing. Let me kind of pan at it if we could. So it's got a four, does it have a 420? Wait, what motor's in it right now? It's 427. It does LED. have the 427. I saw the badging on it. And uh, yeah. Now, is that the hood? That is, is that the hood that came on it or is that an aftermarket deal? That's the hood. That that's, is the hood. That's the hood for an L88 optioned car. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, that is amazing. Yeah. So good. And what color was this car originally? You have any idea? Green. 
It was green. It was green, yeah. Wow, man. Got an upgrade on the color for sure. Yeah. Yeah, this is the one of the last cars that Steve Mason worked on before he passed away. Um, at HS? Yes. Yeah, and he was like considered one of the best. And yeah. And, and it was painted. and he's the one that actually came up with the suggestion of the color. This is actually the basic red toner from the mixing station without any additions whatsoever. Wow. Yeah, so good. Now the exhaust, of course. Kind of a patent look for the older Corvettes. And what is that? What's that going on? That was a here? factory option. It was. The side side pipes, yeah. This yeah. car originally didn't have it. it, had through the back where you put a new panel on that deleted the exhaust holes and then put the, uh, the side pipes back on it. And what year did they go to the fastback style? Because I know before that they, they were kind of like a straight window, right? 61 is the first, yeah. 61. And this, yeah, so this is one of the first years that they had the fastback. Yeah, of the, the, the Series 2 Corvette. Yeah. Uh, this is this was the last one 67 68 went to the longer bottles right okay yeah i'm gonna wrap now these bumpers these hard to get if you try yeah they are <laughs> right i'm sure they make aftermarket right but they, it, they do but they these these were purchased from a company that uh that has the original dyes okay from general motors so they're supposedly perfect reproductions right now i would that's the is that fuel right, right. there that's the fuel tank right right here yes. This has the larger 30 gallon Le Mans style fuel tank. Oh, wow, okay. That was something that they made. Yeah. This was all like road racing, uh, engineering in these cars, you know. Right. Now, interesting, this is for a client in Canada, right? That Correct. you're doing it for? I mean, what made, how, how does someone in Canada end up here in Bakersfield? <laughs> well, I'm, I'm his sales rep for okay. his, he owns a, a worldwide valve manufacturer. Yeah. And uh, we, of course, Bakersfield being an oil town, we've, uh, done quite a bit of business here mm -hmm. and uh he and i've known each other for quite a while as a result and uh i've got a i do a lot of this kind of work myself i've got a little dick speed marine thing that i got going yeah. but uh this is this is a little bit out of my league yeah <laughs> so with chris here who has the patience of the saint yeah. and the uh skills of a god <laughs> has put this thing together massively i mean it's just the, yeah. the amount of time and effort just even the because a lot of the aftermarket parts you get, they just don't fit that well. And it costs more in labor to make them fit properly than it did to buy them. Really? Because a lot of that happens. And yeah. You can attest to that. It was probably about a month's worth of labor just to get the back bumper to fit. Really? Yeah. And I got two weeks just getting the side pipes on, doing research. Um, had to alter the body. Yeah. That was, a, that was a thing that I learned that they did at the factory, you know, and nobody would have known unless you're doing that conversion in 2020. Were they using fiberglass at this time? Mm -hmm. Yeah, they were. Okay. H and uh, S, um, and of course Steve Mason mainly uh, was the original. He's the one that first started the bodywork on this. And these cars were not built well in '67. It was a pretty sloppy build, mm -hmm. and so there's been a lot of modifications, like where the the doors wrap up onto the hood. Those those never match up. And uh, he actually cut the fiberglass and, and made some of the doors door parts were extended to make them longer some shrunk to make them smaller but in the end result was a perfect fit with really good seam um, spacing right i'm gonna get in here and take a look at this interior now this has been upgraded a little bit right i mean this was was this a this is a little bit of a custom design in here well the the upholstery um pattern it is the same but it, they were really but it's got some red stitching and stuff to kind of yes yeah that looks nice yeah the owner wanted red on red yeah but we couldn't find a red leather that was complimentary to this color, so we went to black with red stitching. Wow. Yeah, I love it. Let me get in here. Oh, yeah. Another nice story is the, uh, the gauge panel on this car. Yeah. Uh, when I sent it in, yeah, like I said, this car was a basket case when we got it. And I sent the gauge cluster in to get refurbished. And... Um, the guy that was that was doing it back east, he called me and uh, had, had told me that, that the gauge cluster that I had given him was actually for the wrong vehicle. And he had the original one that was supposed to go on this vehicle on the shelf. And so he swapped me out and I think it was 350 bucks and for the upgrade. But this one's got the uh, original LA8 TAC with the higher RPM register. Oh, it does. Oh yeah. and. Uh, Am it's, I wrong to think that that's in really nice condition? I mean, I was looking at it's it. And all I was, been yeah, it's all been refurbished. been restored. The clock has been restored. The as clock well. works. Yeah. Uh, 
Yeah, that's nice. It looks so clean, you know what I mean? It looks like factory new. That's what's oh, yeah. amazing on it. It's, it was a really highly optioned car to begin with. It's a 67 big block, uh, factory AC, factory power steering, factory electric windows. Uh, it, it had pretty much nearly every extra option you could have bought yeah. in 67. And they only made 8,000 of these coupes to begin with. So of that, it's it's rare in itself. Yeah, yeah they produced more convertibles than they did coupes. All right, this, this tire rim package. What are we talking about here? Is this is this OEM or pretty close no, no. to it? No, no, this is aftermarket, but it, it it's a 17 inch wheel. Okay. And uh, alloy, yeah. the original ones, you could get the, the alloy wheels that came on these originally were like a thin shape, like a yeah. sunburst. Um, these are reminiscent of the uh, steel wheels that had the beauty ring in the center cap. Yeah. Just, there's just uh, alloys. Yeah, it definitely looks the it, time it period. It still gives it the look. Yeah. Yeah, very good. Then it, it, the 17 inch with the low profile makes it better look. All right, let's take a look at this motor here. That's a big dude, right? Yeah, it's got uh, it's got the, the winter winter foundry uh, intake and heads, uh, all aluminum. They're painted, but they are aluminum. Um, and this thing is, it was detuned. The factory uh, compression ratio on this engine was 12 and a half to one, and we've dropped it to 11 and a half to one. To, and we still have to run race fuel in it but uh and then the it's it's got the original led8 uh solid lifter cam and the um but the valves on this thing are are uh, opened up to 2.3 inch so it's wow. got huge intake valves yeah so this has to you have to run race fuel in this thing it's gonna help <laughs> yeah yeah i mean that's <laughs> it's gonna it's a little hard to drive it around right i mean it's yeah. not, it's not, i don't know if it's gonna be a daily driver with race fuel right a little bit harder and we, we actually got a little bit of fuel from uh H and S from uh, Dick there uh, that they run in their their NASCAR uh, and kind of mixed it in just yeah. to help it out a little bit. You say it has more power than this thing can probably use, right? Yeah, what, oh. what do you think that motor's putting out? Probably six hundred horse. Probably or? six. Yeah. Jeez. Yeah. Which they didn't advertise it as that originally no. for insurance purposes. Yeah, right. They advertised it at like four thirty five, but it's closer to six. Wow. And then the transmission is. Uh, it's a uh, Muncie M22 Rock Crusher four speed. Okay. And they had a, the weak link on those was the um, the case. Couldn't, sometimes wouldn't hold up to the torque. Um, this one has what they call a super case. So it's aftermarket beefed up so it can handle this kind of horsepower. I mean, I, you know, this thing will never be a daily driver and I don't think it's ever gonna see the racetrack, but if it had to, it could. Yeah. Getting ready to be loaded up in a truck and go to Canada to be put in a garage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. going to be like that last scene on Indiana Jones where it's in the crate in a big warehouse. You never see it again. <laughs> yeah. Well, about parts that are hard to find in here. Yeah. This e brake cover was plastic and it was all broken, so we re glassed it, reinforced it, and had it wrapped. Big wow. difference, a lot better to look at. Yeah. And it came with these belt holders. Oh, whoa. Pretty cool, huh? Yeah. That is cool. That was that factory right there? Yeah. It did. That's smart. It's belts out of the way. Well, I'll tell you what, man. I've seen a lot of cars come through the H&S Back to Life series. And, uh, George, I've done a lot with you. And uh, not undermining your other car builds, but this one's over the top. It's, nice. it's a nice car. And, and back to Dick Shepard and H&S. The owner flew down from Canada, looked at the car, found a few issues. Uh, we got a hold of Dick. He sent a, a slide bed out, picked it up, took it to the shop, did the fix. And here it is. Wow. Yeah, they, they're pretty good on making it right, for sure. Yeah. Uh, Dick's a great guy. Yeah, very good. I want to thank you guys for showing us. I'm sure a lot of people are going to like watching this video. And, uh, I mean, this is a testament to uh, George. It's you, man. I mean, you look back at this, and this is a Lifetime Achievement Award, really, for you. Yeah, and, and he's the builder. And Chris, too. I mean, I mean, this is for you, both of you guys, right? I mean, you, you know every aspect of this car, and it, you watch this thing, and, man, that's amazing. There's a lot to it. I, I don't know how many parts and pieces, but... Uh, a lot of time and labor and planning goes yeah. into it. Definitely a team effort here from everybody. So, <laughs> all right, thank. <laughs> yeah. All right, thanks for showing us this. All right.